So it's the idea that technology uh, is everywhere and the distinction between online and offline, real space and cyberspace is a distinction that's becoming less meaningful. We generate more data as a species now every couple of hours than we did from the dawn of time until 2003. And more and more of that data is caught and captured and stored. And what they have is a portrait of human lives, of human existence, what we do, where we go, what we care about, how we feel, who we speak to, which is far in excess of anyone in the past, any priest or prince, they never had such an insight into the human soul. And my thesis is that this, these developments could be as important uh, a turning point for humanity as the invention of writing was, or the agricultural revolution. Because how we store and communicate information and process it is fundamental to how we organize ourselves as a society. I think it's a very interesting metaphor. So when you look at, um, at in the B2B space nowadays, you see this trend of consumerization mm -hmm. where products that or channels of distribution that used to be common for consumers are now getting into the B2B space. So when you think about YouTube, the YouTube's mission is to actually give everyone a voice and show them the world, so creating this channel of distribution towards billions of people. I think RPA could become a way to, to automate or to democratize, let's say, access to automation and mm -hmm. to, to AI technologies. Algorithmic applications are going to be one of the most important features of the world that we're moving into. And I think there are two really important trends that we have to keep an eye on. And I look at them through the prism of social justice. One is the distribution of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it used to be that things of importance were principally distributed by the market, subject to the state intervening and taking some from one place and giving them to others. Um, increasingly, that system is overlaid by algorithmic intervention. So your access to credit, your access to insurance, your access to healthcare in some countries, uh, is increasingly mediated through algorithms which process data about you and incidental to you and determine whether you get what you want and the terms in which you get it. It's said now as well that 72% uh, of CVs, of resumes, are no longer read by human eyes. They're increasingly being processed by automated systems. And so your access to a job, one of the most fundamental things of economic value, is increasingly determined by algorithms. Now this is important because Things like credit and jobs and insurance are not small things, they're big things. And your access to them or otherwise determines whether you have a good life or a not so good life. Mm. And therefore how these algorithms function, who trains them and how they are trained and whether they are fair, matters. When I was doing training and building training, um, my question was do we build training focused on people or do we build training focused on technologies? So the, the human-focused type of learning is where you literally take every detail of that human experience and understand what they need, how much they can absorb, and what gives them back, and how they can utilize the knowledge. The technological-based learning approach is where you utilize all the new technologies to utilize them, to promote them, to test them, uh, without understanding whether it's the right choice for as a learning medium for, for people. And I guess it's the same when, when you propose technology, right? Even like to adopt technology, to learn it within a customer, for instance, our employees, the training you focus on is that it has to have this human focused dimension. So I think AI is the most important thing we've worked on as mankind and it's gonna have amazing positive benefits. Like I'm thinking great education for everyone, personalized education for everyone, healthcare, access to healthcare, uh, and many other benefits that are gonna come in the next few years if we use AI properly. Um, for the past 10 years, I've been observing many trends in education and I've been part of many of them. One of, one of them that particularly interests me and I would like to um, have a long time of observation to see where it goes is the power of the individuals. I really believe in the power of the individuals to shape their life and, and community and environment. And I would like to see that aspect of the self-led learning, where, the, where we evolve from depending on others to prescribe us the learning environment, to an environment where you learn and pick by yourself, you're disciplined enough and motivated enough to, to have your own um, uh, trajectory, let's say, and you also contribute to that. You share your knowledge, you contribute to that, you connect virtually with other classmates. You have virtual teachers or leaders or 
learning coaches, not necessarily teachers. Mm -hmm. So that it's the empowerment model for um, for each and one of us that I would like to, to see more and more of. Um, particularly since I'm coming from a learning paradigm where you know you need to sit in a classroom you have a teacher he decides for yourself or she decides for for you uh, what you have to study um, you're in the, the the framework of the, the three four years of, of learning and you may expect expect to have the theoretical knowledge and then you're expected to know what you have to do in your career and to be performant right we have to change that. We have to change the way we design our educational systems, but we also need to empower and educate our children to be more um, self-led in the way they approach education. Digital technology is such an extraordinary gift to us mm. that the comfort and prosperity and excitement and interest and opportunities for human flourishing that it brings will always be so powerful that to try and resist it in a kind of Luddite destruction way is never going to work. Don't try and turn the clock back to the last industrial revolution because it won't work. But do try and channel what we are producing into something that works for everyone.